depending on when you grew up, there has never been a shortage of different companies to culturally define the gaming landscape since the first video game consoles came to the home market over 40 years ago. And whilst many can be subjectively argued as the best, few could argue that any of them typified the aggressively advertising and marketing fueled 90s in all its highs and lows as Sega. Sega were 90s gaming, and whilst always looking to deliver a knockout blow to either Nintendo, Sony, Atari, or any of its other competitors, Sega, especially via Sega of America, imbued all the snark and attitude that could legitimately be passed off as called by committee on a level last seen when The Simpsons created Poochie the Dog. Hmm. I think he needs a little more attitude. There were a lot of lows for sure, and a large share of misses that still haunt the fans today, as wonderfully illustrated by the current Netflix anime Isekai Oji-san, Uncle from Another World, but there were also areas where Sega dominated and ruled with an iron fist, one of those being the arcade scene, where it had tremendous success all decade long. Sure, at home, for all its marketing hype and blustering, Sega never could quite grab a hold or stay holding on to any top spot against its peers for any significant length of time, but in the dimly lit, smoke-filled haze of neon that was the 90s arcade, Sega ruled the roost. Of course, in 2022, the arcade scene is all but dead, and whilst the nostalgia market is booming in every other cultural field, Sega have mostly only focused on bringing the same 40 or so Genesis or Mega Drive, depending on your territory, games to any new consoles over the last 20 years. Having only recently sought to introduce Mega CD titles to their latest retro mini console, which released in limited quantity in October 2022. Alongside the somewhat overlooked House of the Dead remake, released earlier this year, Sega have only very slowly been dipping their toes into their colossal back catalogue, Yet with so many fans eager to see modern ports, I would like to see them release themed bundles similar to Capcom with their beat em up or fighting game collections, Disney's afternoon collection and Nintendo's extensive porting to the Switch of its own prior libraries. Sega innovated in several fields and in my personal view none so more than the arcade racer. Therefore, I would love to see someone at Sega take note of this and bring out an arcade racers collection with local and online multiplayer, and some bonus features too, seen in other compilations, such as unseen design schematics, artwork, music and the like would be nice too. We have had ports of the early home versions, some mini standalone revivals on prior generations of console, and some dabbling by Sega, but arcade accurate versions would be heaven for nostalgia nerds, Sega and arcade fans alike. Here are my selection of ratures I'd like to see. I hope you enjoy this video and can agree with this selection of retro greatness. Starting out with a game that really helped define a subgenre of ride on racers, Wave Runner came out in the mid 90s and alongside the likes of Alpine Surfer, Alpine Racers, X Games Raw Thrills and countless others saw more extreme sports transition to the arcade to sit alongside more traditional land based racing games, yet despite the popularity it never saw a home port. Whilst the likes of Hydro Thunder had their day in the sun on home consoles, one of the originals never got a Saturn or Dreamcast port. It's time to rectify that and a great new edition of a game that hasn't been seen before at home might even hook some fans to buy this compilation straight out of the gate. So we'll start enough with Wave Runner. Sega really found their footing in the 80s as a leading arcade software developer before they entered the home market, and whilst their pioneering superscalers were mostly all ported home, the emphasis always seemed to be placed more onto the flash and pizzazz of Space Harrier and Afterburner rather than the solid work of Super Hang On, but it cannot be overlooked. In fact, it was one of the first ever ride on arcade machines I ever remember seeing and left a lasting impression. The races may have been rather simplistic and Sega would certainly add to the formula in later years, but the big colourful sprites, the feeling of real acceleration together with the scaling and the sound effects provided a real thrill in those early arcade days. Similarly, 
Super Monaco GP was the first time such a realistic rendition of a real world locale was used to such effect to create a detailed, almost simulation like experience, but combined with all the pace and excitement of an arcade racer that left you exhilarated. They may look a little dated compared to their peers, but were important landmarks in Sega's development in the genre. To actually feel that you were driving around one of the world's premier racetracks and it not be a simple loop unlike the Indy 500 was definitely a sight to behold back then and still evokes great memories and nostalgia even now to this day. <laughs> Virtua Racing is a funny game. Not funny haha but funny that it came when Sega were really pushing what they could do with polygons and looked to branch out into every field with a Virtua title. Yet despite how well received this was when it came out, it happened to coincide with other titles much more popular and therefore never saw the continued growth that led others to sequels. Being the most expensive home conversion due to the requirement of the SVC chip built into the cartridge just to run on the 16-bit consoles, it certainly gave Genesis owners something to show that their console could handle more than just basic games and had a unique look and feel that now play more akin to the likes of Wipeout than a traditional car racer. Its distinct visual style was certainly striking, yet as the team at Sega got better acquainted with the AM2 arcade board, they were soon able to surpass this entry. Had it not been for the success of other Sega racers around the same time, this may have seen a longer run of titles, and indeed may have seen some sequels. However, it was still a great entry, and it's certainly an achievement for the technical abilities of Sega, and it can certainly stand alongside the likes of Virtua Cop, Virtua Fighter and Virtua Strikers respectively. So now we get onto the real heavy hitters, and even if you weren't convinced before, it's going to be an alright thrill ride from here on. There was a not unsubstantial boom in the racing genre for off-road rally racers after Sega Rally blew away critics and gamers alike in the arcades, to such an extent that alongside another racer we'll get to later, it was not uncommon to see Sega Rally cabinets well outside the confines of the arcade domain. Heck, I remember working in a popular bar in the early 2000s that had a twin Sega Rally cabinet that always saw plenty of action, as much as the pool table and the other entertainments there. The crisp audio, the instantly recognisable navigator Sega shouting out instructions and alerting you to forthcoming bends drew you in before you even saw the visuals, and its fluid animations and drive feel was so fun, a sequel was inevitable. This did bleed over to the home market, and soon imitators were everywhere. I think it's fair to say, before the Colin McRae's and the Toka World Sports of the PlayStation era, and more contemporary titles like Codemasters Dirt series, Sega set the bar and opened the door for all others to power slide through. We're almost at the end, so of course Outrun had to make an appearance on this list, and in fact he's technically here twice, as both the original Outrun was such an amazing game, but the amount of hours I sunk into the sequel Outrunners in my local arcade ensures I couldn't leave it out. Whilst the original has had conversions and ports every generation, inclusions into most compilations, even if only the 16-bit version, the sequel was far superior in every aspect. The choice of cars, music, groups were all expanded and the heavy bass coming from behind your head as you sat in the cabinet and you hit that ignition certainly got you amped up for an exciting thrill ride. And whilst there was a brief home port for Outrunners that actually came out for the 16-bit console, it hasn't seen the light of day again until this year when it was re-released as part of the Mega Drive Mini 2 bundle. To bring it back home to modern consoles as part of a dedicated arcade racers pack, that would be something special indeed.
Of course, no lineup would be complete, or technically even start, without the legendary cry of Sega legend Takanobu Mitsuyoshi. In fact, I'd wager most people clicked on this video for this entry alone. Daytona, let's go away. The famous line echoed throughout everywhere in the 90s and 2000s, not just the arcade, but in bars, clubs, movie theatres, bowling alleys, shopping malls, heck, anywhere you could find an electronic socket and space for a cabinet, whether the twin or the full four cabinet cars. That eponymous sound was unmistakable. People I grew up with who had no interest then or now in video games still remember that mighty theme tune. It reverberated around every venue, louder than even the piercing elephant shrieks from Balsim stage in Street Fighter 2. But it wasn't just the sound that made Daytona. The breakneck speed, the four camera angles that let me feel as if you were really driving, the vibrations and bass in the sound effects, the cutting edge visuals, the bright colours solidified Daytona as the go-to racer for so long. Whilst it is still technically available to get hold of on current systems such as the Xbox, depending on your location and how willing you are to go through Sega and Microsoft websites in order to finally purchase it, as it doesn't show up on the current series store, Daytona is one of Sega's biggest ever hits and it's certainly a marquee name that they really should be making more of. They did bring out a sequel and in fact as recently as 2016 they brought out what was technically known as Daytona 3 to the arcades. So there is still very much a market there and I think that that would be reason enough to bring this collection out and ensure sales would be plentiful. If you throw in the sequels, Sega's AM2 Behemoth would certainly lead that mighty cry being heard across the globe once again. Let's go away! We await your return, warrior. We await your return, warrior.